10 years from now, 20 years from now, you will see, oil will bring us ruin. Oil is the devil's excrement. Spoken in 1975, the words of Venezuela's Juan Pablo Perez Alfonso would prove prophetic. He was warning fellow OPEC members about the resource curse. But he was being unfair. Indeed, our modern civilization rests on petroleum's cheap energy. Any curse comes less from oil, and more from imbalance in the structure of the economy. Yes, there can be too much of a good thing, especially oil. When it happens to countries, we call it the resource curse. Some call it Dutch disease. Superficially, Dutch disease refers to Holland's economic troubles following the discovery of large hydro reserves in the North Sea. Soon after exploitation began, the value of its national currency appreciated. This undermined the competitiveness of other sectors of activity, the expensive currency hurt farming, manufacturing, and tourism. Unemployment grew just as the oil sector expanded. Dutch GDP did well. Dutch people, not so well. But that's not quite what happened. At a deeper level, the resource curse comes from an imbalance in the economic structure. An economy is built on three factors, land, labor, and capital. It is a constant balancing act among those three. Land contains water, energy, and resources. Labor is manpower. It relies on families, communities, and skills. Capital is equipment, tools, infrastructure, and any useful currency that can buy them. Each one of those factors has constraints. Consider the case of farming and the effect of land and labor. The land constrains economic output, if it has no water, you cannot farm it. Labor also constrains economic output, if there is not enough people, you cannot operate farm equipment. We can visualize those constraints plot between labor and land. Those two lines intersect and form a boundary of possibilities. Beyond this boundary, economic activity is not possible. The economy remains balanced as long as those factors do not change too much. In Holland, with energy discoveries, the land factor grew, it increased the amount of capital, and the currency appreciated. This growth was too fast for labor to handle. Different sectors of the economy were now competing for the same pool of labor. The other sectors lost some workers. They left for higher paying jobs in the oil sector. But the oil sector could not absorb that many workers on the long run. At first, this was hidden by the fact that the workforce could not adapt fast enough to cover the needs of the oil industry. Dutch manufacturing also lost clients, as the appreciating currency made it harder to export. So did farming. There, the workforce shrunk, adding to unemployment roles. To cover the imbalance in the labor market, the government spent some of the oil income on welfare and social programs. Over time, the spending grew as unemployment grew. This is in industrialized economies. In non-industrialized countries, the economy never really develops. In the 15th century, Spain grew too dependent on imports and lost a sizable portion of its technical know-how. In the modern Arab world, the resource curse became an Arab disease, where the glut of money hinders the emergence of industries. Arab oil exporters tried to stave off this illness through a voluntary industrialization and development program. It worked to some extent, but it came at a great expense. Even if the oil discoveries in the Arab Peninsula followed a pattern similar to the rest of the world, the scale of successive discoveries was far larger. Until recently, most development comes from services centered on rent-seeking, with oil money sticking to the hands that touch it first. The economy radically changes. But it can be changed even more radically. That's the Arab bet. That's where the flashy projects come from. They are trying to change the structure of their economies. They are changing the nature of those factors. Consider farming. It is limited by the amount of good land, which is fixed. Or, consider financial services, they are limited by the availability of labor and capital. But those limits are not set in stone. New technologies appear that expand them. In farming, we can create new land. We did it before, when we invented terracing. It opened up mountain slopes for farming. Nowadays, we expand hydroponics. When we grow food in buildings, we're stacking up farmland on top of one another. In services, capital always substituted for labor, at the margins. Machines can replace many human workers, as the 20th century's blue-collar workers can testify. 
Nowadays, it is the turn of white-collar workers to be automated away, especially now that artificial intelligence has caught up with knowledge work. Indeed, Elon Musk took over Twitter, only 20% of the workforce remained with no obvious loss in performance. This is why information technology adoption is booming in the region. The combination of all this are projects that appear flashy. They are risky. But they radically expand the labor factor, and may catch up with the other factors. So, they may not be such a bad bet. The Arab world may be the first to sustainably beat the resource curse. Thank you for your attention.